In today's video, we're going to talk to you about Lazy Kate's. And in particular, we're going to talk to you about repairing a broken Lazy Kate that is from approximately the 1970s. And we'll also talk to you about where to get parts for your Ashford Lazy Kate's. Let's take a look at three Lazy Kate's that Ashford has made or is still making. So we have this Lazy Kate, this one's a Tension Lazy Kate. The orientation of the bobbin is a vertical, or it is a vertical orientation. We have this Lazy Kate. You're going to see the orientation is actually horizontal. The bobbin goes on a horizontal axis. And then you have this. This is also on a horizontal axis, this Lazy Kate. It's one of the most simple Lazy Kates that's out there. Literally just a base piece of wood, two dowels with a couple holes in them, pieces of metal in between, and put your bobbins on there. And when I purchased it, I knew it was missing one of the wires, and I knew this was an older Lazy Kate. When you purchase older spinning tools, normally the person tells you the condition they're in, or you should ask. If you don't care, then you might be surprised. But in this particular case, it was something where I knew this was an older spinning wheel and I knew this was an older Lazy Kate. So when I had first purchased this, these two wooden dowels, the uprights of this Lazy Kate, were very loose. And that's something that you really don't want. You want these to be nice and more secure in the base of this. So my fix was simply applying a little bit of hot glue. You can take these out, Put a little bit of hot glue in. You can also use wood glue, you can use super glue. There's all sorts of things that you can put in there and you kind of help get these a bit more stable. Why do you need them stable? Well, one of the things you don't want is when you're actually using your Lazy Kate, you don't want to have these come undone and fall off while you're in the middle of applying. That creates a mess. So these, wooden, these metal wires, this one's a little bit bent, and it actually doesn't have any of the, it's a little bit different from this one. This one has two bends in it. This one is just straight. Either way, it's okay. They're both going to fit in. It's just a matter of putting it in and kind of fidgeting with it to get it in there. You can use both, but really this Lazy Kate prefers the straight edge end. The reason I'm replacing these is because, again, they're bent, they're a bit um, in pretty rough shape. I don't want to have a lot of grease on my hands when I'm dealing with my yarn, when I'm plying my yarn, because I don't want it to get on my yarn. I picked these up for $3.99. These are from the Woolery, and these are just traditional Lazy Kate wires. If you want to, of course, you can also use it in this Lazy Kate. However, that other Lazy Kate has the bended wires, the, the wires with the bend, so that's a bit better for it. But when I'm replacing these, after I have secured these into the base, it's quite simple. I simply take these and I push them through. That's how they stay. This Lazy Kate and spinning wheel came with a couple different bobbins. Some of the bobbins that they came with are actually the original bobbins from the 1970s Ashford traditional spinning wheel. Now these are a bit different bobbins from what you can find right now to purchase. The ones you can find right now to purchase look like this. These are unfinished. You can get these either at the Woolery, you can get these at Paradise Fibers. And you're going to notice that they, have, they do have a bit of plastic on the inside of these, whereas the original bobbins from the Ashford traditional, they're completely wood. Now these, they come apart. They need to be repaired, they need to be glued together. One of the things you're gonna notice is these don't come apart, but they will come apart when you keep using them. After use upon use upon use upon use, it does, your bobbins will require you to re-glue the base. And that's not the way that they really um, 
when you're when you're buying a spinning wheel with the bobbins, that that's not really something people talk about a lot. But when you're a professional spinner and you are spinning a large quantity of yarn, there are things that are going to happen just because of the amount of wear, and that's one of the things that's going to happen. These bobbins as well. This has a very deep groove. This hardly has a groove at all. So when you're looking at these bobbins, if we can get this to focus in on something besides my face. So these bobbins, they're a bit different in that they feel about the same weight. There's nothing very substantial different about the weight, but there are some differences just in how they're constructed. So moving on, these bobbins, I'm not going to use these bobbins. These are bobbins that I need to do a bit of repair to, and these are going to be like emergency bobbins for me. this bobbin has taken quite a bit of abuse in life. It has some two marks on this bobbin. It really isn't even held together very well by any means. This part of the bobbin that actually this ridge where your tension goes to control the uptake of how much yarn is getting loaded on your bobbin, how fast is that getting loaded on, how fast is it getting drawn out of your hands, this has had such structural um, compromises due to being chewed on and the repair is just not going to work. This is something that the edges are, were completely chewed off. This was an attempt that someone had tried to repair this, but this bobbin is actually what I would consider too far gone. So this bobbin itself is just going to go in the garbage. Um, I'm not going to be fixing this and it's just not worth trying to spin yarn using this bobbin. If something happens and you do take that risk and try to spin yarn with a bobbin like this, when you're in the middle of spinning yarn, it can cause quite a bit of difficulty and it can add quite a bit of time having to take the yarn that you spun from this bobbin and transfer it to a different bobbin. If you're plying and that happens and you're plying the yarn onto this bobbin, you are in a very difficult spot. Getting the yarn when you're plying from, and, and this bobbin breaks, getting the yarn off of that bobbin onto a different bobbin is an extremely time consuming task. This is going to go in the garbage and it needs to be replaced. So we're actually replacing all of the bobbins. We're not going to use any of those traditional bobbins. These are two new bobbins. So we have our new wires and what we do is skewer your bobbin. So straight through the center of the bobbin all the way through to the end. Your This Lazy Kate certainly has enough room between the ends of this. We're not concerned about any of that. We need to add two more bobbins on here. Let's get our new wires that just went flying. And we have a bobbin that someone had already purchased that came with the wheel that I purchased and they had already stained it to match the wheel and the Lazy Kate. So we're adding all of these on with the new wires. It doesn't matter really which side that you place these wires through. What does matter, however, is when you're putting the bobbins back on here, you want to make sure you have the bobbins correctly placed on your Lazy Kate. 
So this is a repaired Lazy Kate. It doesn't take a lot of effort. It's something that most spinners can do just with supplies that are around the house and then ordering whatever new supplies you need to make your Lazy Kate. This is going to be fully functional. So when you're looking at this Lazy Kate, it is quite old and it has no tension. How do I know that? Well, if I put a bobbin on here, there's nothing that actually takes the bobbin and slows down how it's rolling. So when I'm plying with my Lazy Kate, one of the things I might wanna do is I might wanna slow down how fast the single of yarn is coming off of the bobbins that I spun. So this is the one I use the most, I just really like it. But, I do have this one over here. Now this particular Lazy Kate is also a tension Lazy Kate. These, this little bit, it's wrapped all around, that's not how you put it. But this has the tensioner knob, and this has different, uh, they're called wires on the other one, but this one actually has different wires. These are thicker, and they have no bends in them. So when you're looking at this, this is a much thicker wire, and it doesn't have any of these slight bends. So this one doesn't need the bends. Because of the way that the Lazy Kate is designed, the bobbins simply use gravity, and they stay on when you're using this Lazy Kate. The last time I checked about how much does this Tension Lazy Kate, which still sells, how much it is, it's around, I think this one's around between $60 to $70 in that department. It depends on where you're getting it from, and typically it's just the Lazy Kate. It doesn't include the bobbins. But you can buy these replacements. You can also buy all this little bit of, um, it looks like fishing line. But you don't have to use this plasticky fishing line. You can actually use regular yarn if you wanted to. You could use hemp, for example. That's a very great alternative to the plastics. But there's quite a bit you can buy in replacement parts. You can get the replacement parts at the Woolery, and you can also find replacement parts at Paradise Fibers. Those are two good places to take a look at when you're starting to look for replacement parts. this video on the different Lazy Kates that we have as well as how to repair this Lazy Kate. So the cost of a bobbin by the way is going to vary. You can go on Etsy and you can find some people who make bobbins themselves. These you can expect to pay a minimum of probably around $15 on up depending on the type of bobbin you're looking for as well as if you want it finished. All sorts of different things go into the price of a bobbin. So thank you very much for watching.